So how is it that the cost to replace an HVAC system has just exploded over the last few years? You're probably thinking, well, it's just due to COVID, inflation, just like everything else. Well, you would actually be partially wrong because the price increase in the HVAC industry has gone up substantially higher than most other industries. But what caused all of this? And is there any light at the end of the tunnel? Well, let's find out. Hi, this is Kenneth with Atlas AC, and at any point during this video, if you find it to be helpful, please hit the like button, and that will really help me out with the YouTube algorithms. So I'm going to break this up into two different sections, the first being equipment pricing and what all it has done over the last few years, and the second being recent contractor practices that a chunk of the industry is starting to follow, and that's going to be shocking to most folks to learn about. So back in 2020, we were able to sell a basic 4-ton heat pump system installed for $5,800. And today that's now going for $10,500. So let's take a look at what happened here. So the first substantial price increases that we saw isn't going to be a surprise to anyone because it came in 2021. During the lockdowns when manufacturers were dealing with major supply chain issues, they had to diversify, find more vendors, and build more factories. So we ended up with four price increases throughout 2021. So by the end of 2021, we were selling that exact same basic four ton heat pump for $6,900, which was a 19% increase. Now when it comes to 2022, that year ended up being a whole lot less eventful. We ended up with only a 7% price increase, which is still a little bit higher than pre-lockdown price increases, but still very manageable. So our prices went from $6,900 to $7,300, $7,400. Now in 2023 rolled around, that was a whole lot less subtle and more like a punch in the face. And that's because we saw a 21% price increase. So prices went from $73 to $7,400 to $8,900. And that's because the Department of Energy made changes to efficiency requirements in HVAC systems, which if you're unfamiliar with the whole SEER 2 rollout, you might want to watch this video next. But in a nutshell, they changed the way that SEER was being measured, along with increasing the minimum SEER rating. Now as a side note, each system type was not affected equally, meaning on basic single stage systems, they were hit the hardest. And that's because they're the most inefficient systems on the market. Now when it came to the high efficiency variable speed communicating systems, there wasn't that big of a price increase. I think it was closer to like 7%. And that's because they're already super efficient and already met most of the new standards. Now when 2024 rolled around, that year ended up being very similar to 2022. So basically somewhat stable. So our prices went up about 6%. So overall, very manageable. So prices went from $8,900 to $9,500. Now if we fast forward to 2024, we've experienced around 11% price increase. So prices went from $9,500 to $10,500. And many people would think that's due to the tariff stuff going on right now. But actually that has affected prices a lot less than I thought it would have. The big increase came from the refrigerant changeover. And this is due to the EPA requiring 410A to be phased out and replaced with more environmentally friendly refrigerants like R454B or R32. If you're unfamiliar with those refrigerants, you might want to add this video to your list to watch next. Now I do want to point out, both in 2023 and 2025, we were placed in a better price tier with our distributor, and that's just due to our increase in volume. So this helped keep prices lower than what they would normally would be. So if we didn't change price tiers, I would expect that the end result would be about 20% higher than what I'm showing you here. So overall, what we saw starting off in 2021 is manufacturers had to re-diversify their supply chains due to the lockdowns. And in 2023, we had the DOE's SEER 2 rollout, which was the next big hit. Then after that, in 2025, we had the EPA's refrigerant implementation. So over the last few years, we were just slapped with these three big hits that just contributed to these big price increases. Hmm, it seems to me that there might be an underlying culprit behind all these price increases. If only somebody could clear this up in the comments below. So is there going to be any reprieve to these price hikes, or are there still more to come? Well, there ends up being a little bit more to it than a simple answer. So I'm going to cover the future of HVAC pricing closer to the end of this video. So now let's shift gears and talk about the wild things that's going on at the contractor level. So let's start off with taking a look at this article written by Forbes. That's titled, Private Equity is Taking on the Skilled Trades. And if we scroll down and just look at this first paragraph, you can see in the HVAC plumbing and electrical businesses, they have now acquired up to 800 companies in the industry since 2022. And this article was written in October of 2024. So if you're unfamiliar with what a PE firm is and what they do to an industry, let me explain. 
So PE will go out and raise private money to acquire businesses in a certain industry. So whenever they acquire a business, that feeds up to something like a holding company. And by doing this, the company that they acquired gets to use the exact same name and looks and appears to be the exact same company to the general public. When in reality, behind the scenes, it's a completely different company. So the soul of the company essentially gets gutted and driven by two things, which is growth and increased profit margins. So they're going to try to figure out a way to cut as much cost as they possibly can, along with maximizing their profits from their existing customer base. And that's what's now essentially driving the company. So they're going to do this 10, 20, 100 times until their portfolio is big enough to repackage and sell, either to the stock market or some other big entity. So the easiest way to hit their numbers is to simply go way up on their prices. Now the issue with this is it's going to price them out of the market where nobody's going to buy from them. So the solution to this is to create a local monopoly. So they'll concentrate their efforts and buy as many companies as they can in a specific local area to pick up as much market shares as they can. So whenever you get a quote to replace your system, and let's just stay with a basic four ton heat pump, they're going to quote you like $30,000. And you're going to be like, that doesn't seem right. That's completely unreasonable. So I'm going to get more quotes. So you get another quote and it was also $30,000. And you're like, well, just to be safe, I'm going to get one more quote. And that one was $35,000. So now you're like, well, I guess that's just the going rate and how much HVAC systems cost. When in reality, each one of those companies were owned by a PE firm. Now going back to earlier, out of those 800 service companies that PE firms have bought recently, a lot of that has been acquired in Texas and Florida. And I can tell you, we are seeing it in all of our service areas. DFW, Austin, San Antonio, and Houston. So if you're asking the question, how do I avoid something like this from happening to me? Well, the answer is you're kind of already doing it. Because as long as you get educated about AC and heating, it's going to be a whole lot harder to pull the wool over your eyes. Because these companies are hoping that you know very little about HVAC, and you get trapped inside their ecosystem, and that's when they're able to take advantage of the situation. And you might be asking, Kenneth, if this was such a big deal, why isn't there more people reporting on it? Well, there's a pretty simple answer. So let's say you get in your car after work to drive home. You turn on the radio, then every 30 seconds you get inundated with some HVAC contractor promoting their business. And simply put, all these outlets need the revenue. So if they reported on it, that could potentially cut off a major revenue stream. Now, if you talk to somebody in the HVAC industry, they're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Now let's look into what does the future of the HVAC industry look like, especially in regards to pricing. So let's first cover the equipment. Then I'm going to cover how the PE firms are probably going to pan out at the end of the day. So if we look at equipment and if we take a look at the past and look at the major drivers of what caused the price increases, there's really only two things that caused these price increases. The first one being the lockdown where we saw manufacturers having to re-diversify their supply chains. And this year two in refrigerant chains came from government regulations. So we're really looking at supply chain and government regulations. So the easiest one for us to first narrow down is government regulations. Because a lot of times these bills will get signed into law about a decade or so before they actually take effect. And this gives time for the manufacturer to prepare for the changes. So we can basically see what's in the pipeline and start predicting from there. So I'm only aware of one major regulation that's in the pipeline and it's not going to happen until the tail end of 2028. And it requires the minimum efficiency standards on gas furnaces to operate at 95% efficiency. So that means the more common 80% furnace is gonna have to go away. So going from an 80% furnace to a 95% furnace is going to increase the cost around uh, $2,000. So it's going to end up being a pretty good jump in pricing. However, if you don't have a gas furnace and you have something like a heat pump, you're not going to be affected by these changes. So lucky for us, over the next couple years, we're not going to have to be dealing with any major equipment changes. So pricing in this category should be unaffected until the end of 2028. And now for the hard one, supply chain. So manufacturing has globalized over the last few decades. So parts, pieces, and components come in from multiple different countries. And some HVAC manufacturers have set up plants in Mexico. And if you've been watching the news, currently there's a lot going on with tariffs right now. So I would be lying to you if I told you I knew what's going to happen here. And everybody that I've spoken with in the industry has no clue either. So I can kind of address the here and now and what to expect for the rest of the year. So in regards to what we've seen so far this year, it's been quite interesting because there was a 10% tariff that was put on Mexico and our base model single stage systems are actually assembled in Mexico. So I was expecting the prices to go up by 10%. However, those prices only went up a couple points. And the high-end communicating systems and the two-stage systems that we also sell that are built in America, 
Those prices didn't change at all, even though that there are other components that are built in other countries. So I would have expected some sort of impact there, but we didn't see anything. Now in regards to the rest of the year, I'm being told from our manufacturer, along with our distributor, that they're locked in and that there will not be any more price increases for the rest of the year. And these are pretty credible people because if they didn't know, that's what they would have told me. So in a nutshell, I have no clue what's going on, but what little I do know is that the pricing should be locked in for the rest of the year. So as of right now, we're not planning for any more price increases. Now after this year, we're just going to have to cross that bridge when, whenever we get there. Now moving over to PE firms, this is actually not the first time we have seen this in the HVAC industry. Because this has happened in the 90s, the 2000s, and the 2010s. So we can kind of project on what's going to happen here. So the PE business model is typically short-lived. So once they enter into a market, they generally get out in 5 to 7 years. And we saw PE firms enter into the market around 2021. So that means that they're going to reach maturity in about 2 years. And at that point, they're going to have to sell their portfolio of companies to somebody, whether that's an IPO or an institutional investor. And from there, generally professional operators are installed, like a CEO, an executive team, and so on. And this is when things generally start to turn around, because these folks generally have to have a more of a longer term vision versus how do I milk this thing for all it's worth. And also, PE firms are considered to be a risky investment, and they don't really have a very strong success rate. So there is going to be some fallout that we're going to see. And some once really good companies just disappear. And again, the easiest way to avoid a company like this is to just simply get educated. We have transparent pricing on our website. So if you compare our price to their price and it's just exorbitantly off, then there might be something going on there. If you found this video to be helpful, please hit the like button. We also have free buyer's guides and price lists on our website that you might want to check out. Until next time, have a good one.